Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about open closed principle. Now, open closed principle says that when you are creating a class, it should be open for extension and closed for modification. What it means is, as a developer, you should not be editing the existing code which is working in production. But if you want to add new functionality in your class, you should be able to add new functionality. So your class should be closed for modification, but it should be open for extension. Let's take a simple example to understand this principle. So in our mobile phone, we have basic functionality that we can call to some other person. We can send messages. We can take photos and etc, etc. So these are the basic functionality which will be available in each of these mobile phone. So all these functionality, the mobile provider like Google or Apple, they have closed these basic functionality for modification. So those basic functionalities are closed for modification. But in these mobile phone, we have App Store or Play Store in Google phones through which users can download extra features, extra functionalities like you can go ahead and download some games which you want to play in your mobile phone. So that means that Google and Apple has opened it for extension so that other developers can add more feature in their mobile phone but the basic functionality is closed for modification and that is a very sweet example of open and closed principle your classes when you're writing a class it should be closed for modification and open for extension now let's understand why we should follow this principle let's say you have already written a class which is working fine in production now you get some more feature requests from your product team that we want to add some more feature in this class. And what you have to do is basically add some more functionality in your class. What you do is you go and edit your code, which was already working in production, which brings a risk of introducing potential problem in the code, which is already working fine in the production. So this principle says that you shouldn't be touching the code which is already working, which is already trustworthy and proven in production, right? If something is working properly in production, you shouldn't be touching it. If you have to add more functionality into your class, you should be adding it in such a way that it should not affect your existing functionality. If you do so, then you will run your code into the risk of introducing new bugs. So. According to this principle, we should be able to add new feature to the class without affecting the old code. This is because whenever we edit old code, we run the risk of introducing potential problems. So if at all possible, we should avoid touching the proven and trustworthy mainly production code. Now let's take a real world example to understand this. Let's say a tourist company has a package which provides flights, hotel and guided tour. And it is a very famous company and this package is running pretty good. It is working for this company. Now, they have few customers who are requesting for some more addition to the package. They want complimentary breakfast, but that is not coming into the budget of this package. So what they do is they add the complimentary breakfast, but they modify the flights. So they would say, okay, we'll give you one way of the flight tickets, but we'll not give you the returning tickets, which might not work with the existing customers, right? So the tourist company edited their package for some new customer, but that change of package might not work for the old customer, right? And it might not work for some new customers as well. And this is also breaking our open close principle because their basic functionality, they have opened it for modification, which is not accepted in our solid principle, right? So what we will do to make it comply our open close principle. So the tourist company should not touch their basic package, which includes flight, hotel and guided tour. And if they want to add complimentary breakfast, they should throw in the complimentary breakfast for their new customers but they shouldn't be touching the old package and that would follow our open close principle. So as per open close principle, your basic functionality should be closed for modification. You shouldn't be modifying your basic functionality, but if you want to add more features, if you want to add more functionality, you should add it in such way that your basic functionality is not touched and it is not affected by the new functionality. Now let's see another example. In this example, as you can see, we have a mixer grinder 
our mixer grinder has this extension tool which can be changed so you can change this one with either of these two right but the basic functionality the basic functionality of our mixer the engine of our mixer is closed for modification it's not like you have to open this part and then fit this you can simply remove this part and fit these other tools right so you would not be opening the basic functionality the basic functionality is closed for modification but it is open for extension so mixer engine is basically open for extension but it is closed for modification so you cannot do anything with mixer in engine but it is open for extension because you can use these extension tools and use it according to your need now let us take a code example to understand open closed principle over here we have a class area calculator and what it does is it has a function called calculate rectangle area and it takes width and height of the area and it just simply returns the area of the calculator so this area calculator just calculates the area of a rectangle now let's say that we want to add one more functionality to include area of a circle so how we will do it we will simply create another function over here itself and that would be to calculate the circle area now this function will take a radius and then it will return the area of the circle by using this radius now this class is not complying the open close principle because let's say you want to add one more functionality in this class to calculate the area of a square and then you want to calculate the area of a triangle so for all different kind of shapes you want to calculate the area and for that you will have to again and again modify this class so this class is open for modification which is against the open close responsibility principle so your class should not be open for modification you need to design your class in such a way that it is not open for modification but it is open for extension so let's say how do we resolve this problem how do we create this area calculator class in such a way that it would be closed for modification and open for extension now to do so we will have to create an interface which can be called shape and this shape interface will have one function which is called calculate area now our area calculator will calculate the area of the shape every time you want to calculate the area of a new shape you will have to create a class which will conform to this interface and then our new area calculator class would be able to calculate the area of any class which conforms to this interface shape so let's see how we can design our area calculator class so we will simply create our area calculator class and inside this class we will have our first variable which would be of type list of shapes in this area calculator class we can calculate the area of list of shapes and then we will create a simple constructor area calculator to just initialize this shapes variable which is a private variable now and then we will have our calculate method which will basically calculate our area so in this method we have this double area which is defined to zero and then in a for loop for each shape we will be calling our calculate area this calculate area is our interface method so every time a class which wants to calculate the area will have to implement this method and in that method they will define how the area is calculated so this area calculator is now removing the dependency from each type of shape and now can calculate the area of any type of shapes which conforms to our interface so now let's say if you want to calculate the area of a rectangle or for a circle what you'll have to do is create a class rectangle which will conform to the shape interface and then you will have to implement this calculate area let's see how we can do that so we create a class which is called rectangle and which implements to our shape interface and now we create our variables so in our rectangle class we will have width and height variables and then we will create our constructor to initialize these variables so we have created this constructor which where we initialize our width and height variable and in the end you will have to give definition to this calculate area function because you have implemented from the shape interface so now we will create our definition for calculate area function so now as you can see this is an overridden function and in this calculate area function we will just simply return the multiplication of width and height which would be the area of our rectangle shape now let's say similarly you want to calculate the area of circle as well 
So now what we do is again we create a class called circle which will again implement this shape interface and in this circle class we will have radius. So our first variable is radius and now let's initialize this variable. So we will be creating our constructor to initialize our variable and then we'll have to implement the calculate area function which is part of our shape interface. So now Let's create our overridden function, public double calculate area, and then we will return our area based on this radius. Similarly, if you want to calculate the area of a square or a rectangle, you will create similar classes which will implement from our shape interface. And then we will just give definition to our calculate area function in each of those class. So in this example, the area calculator is now closed for modification, but it is open for extension using this shape interface.